Hey friends, today we got the full previews for all four of the Commander Precons coming with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So I'm covering each of the Commander Precons in their own videos, and this one will be focused on Grain Larceny, a new Saltai Theft deck. We're going to check out every single card in the Precon, starting with the 10 brand new cards that are exclusive to the deck, and then the rest of the deck, which are all reprints. As always, you can support the channel by buying these sweet Precons or the sweet new singles over at our sponsor, cardgame.com slash mtggoldfish. So Grain Larceny is a Saltai theft deck. The goal of this deck is to steal our opponent's cards and use them against them to win the game. We can steal our opponent's decks many different ways. The most common way though is going to be exiling the top cards of our opponent's libraries and then casting them later on in the game. And this version of theft is also combat focused. A lot of our theft triggers are based on combat damage. So we're going to be attacking with evasive creatures, dealing combat damage to our opponents, and then that's going to trigger our theft effects to steal cards from our opponents. Our face commander kind of exemplifies exactly what this deck is trying to do. It's Gaunty Canny Acquisitor. This is a 5 mana Saltai 5 5 legendary creature, Aetherborn Rogue, and it says spells you cast but don't own cost one less to cast. And whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. So Gaunti is both a theft enabler, it's a card advantage engine, it allows us to steal cards off our opponents, but also is a ramp card in our command zone as well too, because the spells we steal and then subsequently cast cost less mana to do so. So Gaunti is very sweet. 5 mana is a lot in 2024 Magic, which kind of hurts my soul to say that out loud. However, the payoff is very, very good. The hoop to jump through is very minor, just dealing combat damage to our opponents. We're going to have a bunch of evasive creatures to do that very consistently. But the payoff here is both card advantage and ramp. Very good ramp, uh, both in a single card. So... High mana value cost for Commander these days. Uh, a little bit of a hoop to get its value, but it's card advantage and mana advantage in the command zone, which is excellent. The other new Commander in the deck that's in the 99, not the face Commander, is Felix Five Boots. This is another 5 mana Saltai Commander. It's a 5-4 uh, legendary creature, Ooze Rogue. I absolutely love that. It has Menace, Ward 2, and if a creature you control dealing combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this is Panharmonicon for combat triggers, combat damage triggers. Uh, it works very well with Gaunti, obviously, because now we're going to be triggering Gaunti twice as many times, stealing twice as many cards, but it's also very open-ended because it just really, really works well with uh, combat damage triggers. And uh, there's a lot in the pre-con, but there's even more if you actually build around this as your commander. So Felix is a very strong commander, very interesting to build around. However, to really utilize Felix as a commander, you want to go more ham with combat damage triggers than the actual, the stock precon actually does. So I think it's not as good as a face commander leading the stock precon, but it is definitely very interesting and worthy of building around. So the things you would be looking out for uh, with Felix are just ways of giving all your creatures uh, combat triggers with stuff like Biden Athasa. You're going to be drawing double the amount of cards. Uh, the swords, any equipment that have uh, a combat damage trigger that's really powerful, like Sword of Forge of Frontier, is both card advantage and a lot of ramp potential too. And then stuff that's also already in the deck, like Silent Blade Oni is already in the stock list, is going to work really well because you're going to get to basically steal two spells off your opponent's hand rather than just one. One. So Felix is very open-ended on how you want to build it. There's like a billion different really sweet uh, combat damage triggers. So you just kind of mix and match your favorite ones and put them in the deck and you'll have a really sweet deck overall. So the commander is really, really sweet, uh, really exciting build around, uh, kind of like a Saltai Ishin, even though uh, different type of triggers, but both very aggressive. Moving on, we have Thieving Varmint. This is a two mana black, two one creature varmint. It's I thought maybe a varmint would be like a rodent or something, but no. Uh, it's death touch lifelink, and you can pay, uh, you can tap it, pay one life, add two mana of any one color, spend this mana only to cast spells you don't 
own. So this card is obviously a slam dunk in any theft deck. Um, it's a two drop that is ramp and it's very effective ramp because it also mana fixes for you if, uh, for example, the cards you steal, you can't spend any type of mana to cast it. You need to have very specific types of mana available to you. This one can help mana fix for that. And also it's just a nice deterrent uh, if anybody's trying to attack you. They don't want to trade down with your varmint, obviously. So it's a good blocker, a good deterrent rather, and a good ramp in a theft deck. Moving on, we have Tower Winder. This is a two mana, one, one creature snake. It has reach and death touch. And when it enters the battlefield, search your library and or graveyard for a card named Command Tower, reveal it and put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle. So this is basically like Sylvan Scrying, but just for a Command Tower. It doesn't ramp you, uh, but it's a two drop that is another really great uh, blocker, uh, attack deterrent because nobody wants to trade down for it and when it ETBs it grabs one of the best lands in your deck obviously the command tower which is uh, an incredible mana fixing land it's going to feel a little bit awkward if you already drew the command tower it's already on the battlefield because you can only have one command tower in your entire deck um, so it's very poor as like a mid to late game card if you've already seen a command tower but I think like statistically speaking odds are the time you want to play tower winder you probably haven't seen command tower so it should fetch it up most games and then even so even if you already have a command tower on the battlefield and you can't you can't tutor it up with the tower winder at worst it's a 1-1 death touch with reach so it's a very good blocker so I think this card is actually quite good um, but it could feel a little bit bad if you already have the command tower, obviously, but statistically it's going to be a pretty solid card. Moving on, we have Savvy Trader. This is a four mana green, three, three creature, human citizen. When it enters the battlefield, exile target permanent card from your graveyard. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost one less to cast. Uh, so this is a little bit of graveyard recursion. Um, you just get something back from your graveyard that's a permanent, which is quite nice. And then spells you cast from anywhere. Uh, that's the main draw of the card. It's ramp for your cast from anywhere else. So it works very well with Gaunti. It actually doubles up with Gaunti too, because you're exiling cards from with Gaunti. You get to cast them from exile. So now with uh, Gaunti and Savvy Trader, they can cost two uh, colorless mana less. Uh, but they also work outside of just this theft deck. Uh, they work very well with any sort of exile matters type deck. Uh, decks that focus on casting stuff from exile outside of this Gaunti deck, for example. Uh, one other home for it would be Faldorn Dread uh, Wolf Herald. This is all about impulse draw, uh, casting stuff from exile. So Savvy Trader uh, just works very, very well with that. Uh, it exiles a card from the graveyard and then you could cast it and get, make a wolf token. And also just the spells you're casting from exile costs less mana. So that's just a really good card in a couple different shells. Moving on, we have Smirking Spelljacker. This is a five mana blue, three, three creature, Jin Wizard Rogue. It has flash flying, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target spell and opponent controls. Uh, whenever it attacks, if a card is exiled with it, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. Now, this one is kind of interesting. It's a theft card, so it works very well for Commander, and it works very well in basically any theft shell. However, it is a five drop, and you have to keep up five mana and hope an opponent casts something worthy of stealing uh, before you get any value out of it. And obviously, it's a callback to Spelljack, which used to be a pretty popular card back in the day. Uh, yeah, the card is sweet. It's just a little bit clunky on how much mana you have to keep up. Uh, just to utilize this ability and then sometimes you hold up all that mana and there's nothing to steal and you feel pretty bad uh, The card is good in a couple different shells. It's a rogue So it could fit in like a rogues deck It's obviously good in any sort of theft deck and it actually might be good in blink decks um, Any sort of blink decks that can do it at instant speed So let's say you spell jack uh, a nice spell and you have the smirking spell jacker on the battlefield You attack with it you cast that spell for free and then it's just sitting around on the battlefield. And then there's another really cool spell you want to steal. You could like Essence Flux it for one mana, uh, counter that spell, yoink it, and then cast it next time you attack too. So there's a lot of blink potential. And I think that's actually the best home for it ra rather than rogues or even like your generic theft deck. So the card is cool. It just has a he heavy build around requirement to it.
Moving on, we have Orochi Soul Reaver. This is a six mana black 5 4 creature snake ninja rogue, as in Jensu of four mana. And whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and manifest the top card of that player's library. So, again, works very well with theft. Uh, it works very well with evasive creatures, number one, because you can ingest it out for a lot cheaper. Um, and then it adds a nice little anthem effect for all your attacking creatures, more combat damage triggers, uh, gives you tokens immediately back, treasure tokens, so it ramps you and steals. So it's card advantage and mana advantage both rolled up into one. It works very well, obviously, in the theft deck, but it also works well in face down decks in particular. Uh, I could see it uh, being played in maybe Kadena, for example. Uh, if Kadena's on the battlefield, uh, when you're uh, putting face down creatures, manifesting, you're drawing cards with it. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I even love it, especially in Atrada, uh, because you could flip all those manifested cards uh, for four mana. It doesn't even man uh, matter if you like manifest an instant or sorcery. You can still flip it up and cast them with Atrada. So I actually think Atrada is the greatest home uh, for this deck. I really like the deck a lot, by the way. I did like a $25 uh, version of the deck recently in a previous video. So check that out if you like Atrada too. Next, we have Arcane Heist, the return of Cypher. And God, I love Cypher. It's one of my favorite mechanics. Okay, so this is a four mana blue uh, sorcery. It says you may cast target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into their graveyard, exile it instead. And it has Cypher. Uh, for those who don't know what Cypher is, it's a pretty old mechanic. It says uh, once you cast a spell, you may then exile the spell card encoded on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. So Cypher is very neat in that you can repeatedly recast that spell. And I absolutely love Cypher in Talran Sky Summoner. It's one of the original budget decks that I ever made. Uh, one of the OGs from like 2011, I think. And I recently did a $25 revamp of the Talran deck uh, recently in a recent video. So I'm, I'm going to link it. I'm going to link it in the timestamps. So you could see it for yourself. I'm running some Cypher cards in there. Obviously, I'm going to put Arcane Heist in there too, because every single time you're uh, triggering the combat damage for Cypher, you're recasting a spell. So you're triggering Talran and anything that, you know, triggers off casting is a sorcery. So it's really sweet. And then we've got a new board wipe with Heartless Conscription. This is an eight mana black sorcery. It says exile all creatures for each card exiled this way. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. Exile Heartless Conscription. So this is the next level version of like Decree of Pain. Instead of drawing a bunch of cards and then probably discarding down to hand size, honestly, uh, you get to exile everything, so it's better than destroy. And uh, you get to cast those spells over time and play those lands over time. And then if you have anything that like triggers off casting from exile or, um, you know, like whatever sort of things like Gaunti or like Prosper or whatever, it gets even more sweet. So yeah, really good card. As long as you're in a deck that cares about casting stuff from exile or casting spells you don't own, for example. And then we've got a new equipment, Dream Thief's Bandana. It's a two mana colorless artifact equipment as equip one. And whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of the library, then exile it face down. For as long as it remains exiled, you may play it and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. So again, it's a slam dunk in an aggressive, evasive, theft deck like this one and it will be pretty solid in also other types of theft decks too uh, i would be remiss not to mention don andres at least once in this video so there you go if there was any comment section uh typing away angrily that i didn't mention don andres for any of these cards yet there you go. I think Don Andreas is going to enjoy a lot of these cards. All right, so those were the 10 brand new cards that are exclusive to the pre-con. And now we're going to check out the rest of the deck, all the reprints. And I'm starting with the top four most expensive reprints that are coming in this deck. Overall, I would say the reprint value, at least financially, is very low. I think the last one we looked at, Quick Draw, was exceptionally high. It was like $133 because a lot of like random commons and uncommons were randomly very expensive. And the one we saw before that, Desert Bloom, was about 100 And this one's about like 80 
$83 last time I checked. The most expensive uh, reprints over here is Mind Stylation, which is incredible in a theft deck like this one. Brain Stealer Dragon, which is comically expensive, but, you know, very good in a theft deck as well, too. And then two of the lanes. Uh, we got really two really good uh, lane reprints. The lanes in this deck, by the way, are just very good in terms of the reprints. It's a very solid mana base. And uh, we have two rather expensive reprints with Twilight Mire and Underground River. But I was actually very impressed by the lands. We'll get to that soon. The other uh, reprints that we have here, I'm just going to be starting from creatures and moving to different types of card types. And I'm almost starting from the lowest mana value to the highest mana value. And also keep in mind uh, that the cards you're going to be seeing here, these are not the correct versions that you're going to be finding in the pre-cons. They might have different artwork. Uh, they definitely have different uh, set symbols as well too. Um, but yeah, this is just a representation of the cards you will be seeing. Um, so this deck is all about dealing combat damage. Uh, to utilize both Gonti's ability, but also other cards that care about combat damage. So we have a bunch of evasive creatures to trigger uh, Gonti as efficiently as possible. So we have Slither Blade and Triton uh, Shore Stalker. These are just the two most efficient ways in the entire deck to do so. They're one drops that are unblockable. Baleful Strix is a two drop that's an excellent uh, attack deterrent because as death touch it can trip so it already gets its value immediately and then it flies uh so it has evasion so it can trigger gaunty uh doc orlock grizzle genius is very sweet uh because it's a huge mana discount uh for your exiled spells you don't really do a lot of plotting in this deck uh but you do cast a lot of spells from exile uh, so those cost two less to cast on that two drop which is insane then we've got Ghostly Pilfer, another uh, really great card draw engine in Commander because anytime your opponents are casting their Commander cards uh, from the Command Zone, you're going to be drawing a card. And then if they're ever casting from Exile and stuff, you draw even more cards. But it also comes with Evasion. Silhana Ledgewalker, also Evasion, but also good protection. Thieving Skydiver can steal your opponent's like Sol Rings or whatever, and it flies. Cold Eye Selkie comes with Island Walk. So if anybody has an island, it comes with Evasion and it draws a bunch of cards, especially if you can pump up its power which I don't think the deck really does, but, you know, it, it could be a potential there. Um, then we got Edric Spymaster Trust, one of my favorite cards of all time, one of my favorite commanders of all time, more card draw. Uh, Nashi Moon Sage's Scion. Uh, it works really well with those cheap evasive creatures because it can enable ninjutsu and also steals cards from our opponents, which work very well with the deck's theme. Shadow Mage Infiltrator, another one uh, that's evasive. It's an OG. Uh, I think it's John Finkel, is it not? Um, and then it also draws cards when it deals with combat damage. Thief of Sanity. Dealing combat damage, stealing stuff, has evasion, what's not to like. Uh, Trigon Predator, evasive beater that also uh, acts as a disenchant repeatedly. Awesome. Ukima and Kazer are both in the deck and they can fetch each other whenever you cast the first one, which is really cool. Ukima has uh, evasion, can't be blocked, um, and it gets pretty big uh, thanks to Kazer. So, you know. Very nice to see together. Void Attendant is very cool to see here. Uh, you can you can return stuff that have been exiled with your other theft cards and turn that into a ramp, which is neat. Uh, Gaunty Lord of Luxury, the OG Gaunty is here too, uh, the original theft man. Uh, then we have Hostage Shaker, fantastic removal that doubles as card advantage when you can just cast the thing you stole. Uh, Whirl of Rogue gives evasion to your stuff, awesome to see. Blade Griff Prototype, evasion, and and removal, uh, Dazzling Sphinx, Evasion and Theft, Fallen Shinobi, Evasion and Theft, uh, Orin Frostfang gives your stuff a pseudo evasion, I guess, with Death Touch, it's like a, a blocker deterrent, and Card Draw. The Mimeoplasm is odd here, honestly. <laughs> I don't know why it's here, but it's cool. It's always very, quite powerful, I guess. Um, Oblivion Sower, we're going to be exiling a bunch of our opponent's uh, cards, and a bunch of those are going to be lands. So Oblivion Sower is like low-key, just fantastic ramp in the deck. Deluvian Primordial, it's kind of like Evasion of FF as well, too. Uh, Sage from Beyond is very cute. I don't think it's very good because it costs so much mana, but it's a very cute ramp. Uh, in the top end for all the spells we're going to be casting from Exile. Silent Blade Orni, um, not Evasion, but it has an Injutsu, and it has Theft. It's very cool. Uh, Thieving Amalgam, 
theft and face down creatures and just coolness. Um, and also, whenever our opponents, are, whenever our creatures are dying and we don't own them, uh, it drains our opponents too, which is quite nice. Uh, Curse of the Swine, I think, isn't very good, but I mean, it's playable. Extract Brain is okay, too. It's pretty darn sweet. It steals from our opponent's hand. Feed the Swarm is all right, but we're in, I don't know, we're in uh, black and, and green. We can deal with enchantments very well, and we can deal with creatures very well. Kind of odd to see here, but sure, whatever. Uh, Predator's Hour is very cool here. We're, like, all about combat damage and theft, and guess what? This does both. Uh, Rampant Growth is a staple. Siphon Insight, more theft. Three visits, it's another staple, it's five bucks too, so great to see here. Uh, Kodama's Reach, just great mana fixing here. Putrefy, flexible removal. Villainous Wealth, perfect. Everybody loves Villainous, right? If you love Theft decks, you're gonna love Villainous Wealth. It's like one of the OGs here, awesome to see. Uh, Belfa Mastery is solid removal. Uh, Culling Ritual, solid board wipe slash, you know, mana advantage too. Plasm couch Capture is like mana drain at home, but I mean, it's still decent. Stolen Goods, not very good, but I still love playing it. Then we got the Soul Ring, obviously. Arcane Signet, Fell Warstone. Prismatic Lens kind of sucks. It's here to mana fix in case you're like casting a theft spell that doesn't mana fix for you when you're casting the spell, but I feel like we could just do better than it, honestly. Chaos One, more theft. Uh, Dark Seal Ingot, mana fixing, kind of meh. Cunning Rit Rhetoric is theft, but like like a defensive deterrent theft. And then we got the lands. The lands are actually very good. So we got Axis Tunnel, which gives some evasion. It's cheaper than Rogue's uh, Passage for this deck, essentially. Command Tower is good. Dark Six Shores is another really good reprint for a land here. Dark, Dark Water Catacombs, untapped mana, mana fixes. Basically anything that taps for both colors and comes into play untapped is premium. And there's a lot of these in the stack, so I'm really happy about it. The Mirror Aqueduct, I, I still love always with MDFCs and whatnot. Drowned Catacomb, fantastic here. Exotic Orchard, fantastic here. Fetid Pools, it's a duel. It enters the battlefield tapped, so kind of meh, but it's still a dual land, which is nice. Um, Flooded Grove, fantastic here. Hinterland Harbor, fantastic here. Land of Our Waste, Opulent Palace, taps for all colors, so I'll, I'll give it a pass for being tapped. Overflowing Basin. Fantastic here. Reliquary Tower, it's almost $2, so I'll just take the reprint wherever I can get it, even though it's kind of sus here. Uh, Sunken Hollow, fantastic. Temple Deceit, Maladir, and Mystery. I think these cards are overhyped, but you know what? They're they're absolutely fine if you need to play a tap land. Uh, and then we got Viridescent Bog, fantastic, untapped. Woodland Cemetery, and Yavamaya Coast. So like I said, I think the lands are fantastic. The mana base here is exceptionally good. Exceptionally good. Very well done, uh, Wizards of the Coast. My only gripe is where the heck are the Battle Bond lands? They've reprinted them in Commander decks before, so I know the technology is there, and they are multiplayer duels. I think any Battle Ball land that could fit in a deck should be printed in a commander deck. That That's my hot take, I guess. No, it's very lukewarm take. It's very cold take, actually. But yeah, just give me those. But anyway, other than that, gripes aside, the mana base is fantastic. And that is Grand Larceny. Uh, the deck is really sweet. <laughs> I think the deck is really sweet. There's some cards that are kind of like the reprints, especially. Uh, some of them are kind of sus. Uh, some of them are kind of weak. Some of them are kind of gimmicky, like they're on theme, but they're kind of weak. Like Sage of the Beyond and Stolen Goods, I think, are, are a little bit too weak these days. Uh, but no, in, in general, like it sticks really well to theme. It knows what it wants to do. It does it very well. The new cards are very strong and the lands are surprisingly good. And yeah, this deck looks super fun. Looks awful for webcam Commander. So will be tough to showcase it on Commander Clash at the very least, but... Yeah, I really, I really like these decks. I, what can I say? I like all of these decks. Uh, Wizards of the Coast has been really knocking them out of the park these days. Uh, super happy uh, with what the end result is here. So we have three decks down, one more deck to go. I'm going to be recording that now uh after i edit this video so check back in a couple hours it should be up if not it will be up uh friday morning at the latest i guess so like and subscribe if you like this sort of stuff and never want to miss a video and until then friends